Hi! In this lecture, we will be discussing database systems. After completing this chapter, you will be able to define the difference between data information, describe what a database is, its various types, and why they are valuable assets for decision making, explain the importance of database design, see how modern databases evolve from file systems, understand the flaws in the file system data management, outline the main components of the database system, and describe the main functions of a database management system. You might be wondering why databases? We make use of a database because of the characteristics of data in today's world. Data has now become ubiquitous, meaning it is abundant, it is global, and it can be found everywhere. And also pervasive, meaning it is widely spread, therefore it is unescapable, prevalent, and persistent. Databases help us make our data persistent and shareable in a secure way. These are specialized structures that allow computer-based systems to store, manage, and retrieve data very quickly. First, it is important for us to differentiate data and information. Data consists of raw facts. These are not yet processed to reveal meaning to the end user and are therefore called building blocks of information whereas information results from processing raw data to reveal some meaning or context. It is therefore considered as the bedrock of knowledge and should be accurate, relevant, and timely. An example of data would be your test score. If you do some computation like taking the average of their test scores, then that data becomes information. Another example can be like if you have a series of dates, without any context of what those dates represent, they remain data. Now, if you provide context, like for example, if you say that those dates that you have are holidays in the Philippines, then those dates now become information. Now, what is a database? A database is a shared integrated computer structure that stores data. When it comes to data, we may be talking about end user data, which are raw facts of interest to the end user, or metadata, which are just data that describes our end user data. It can also describe the data characteristics and relationships. Now, to manage our database, we have what we call Database Management System, or DPMS. These are just a collection of programs that helps us manage the database structure and control access to the data that is stored in the database. The database management system or DBMS acts as the intermediary between user and data. The following are the roles and advantages of having a DBMS. First, it enables data to be shared across multiple departments. Second, it presents the end user with an integrated view of data. Since the data that you have is shared across multiple departments, the data that is a source of truth for one department is also the same for the other departments. Third, provides more efficient and effective data management. And lastly, it improves sharing, security, integration, access, decision making, productivity, among others. Here in this diagram, we can see how the DBMS acts as the intermediary between our end users and the database structure. Now let's talk about the different types of databases. First, we have single user database. From the name itself, it is a database that supports one user at a time. Typical example of this is a desktop database, which is a single user database that is only applicable or accessible on a personal computer. Next, we have what we call a multi-user database, which supports multiple users at the same time. For this type of database, we have a workgroup database or an enterprise database. A workgroup database is a database that supports a small number of users or specific department, whereas an enterprise database is a database that supports many users across many departments. We can also classify a database by location. In this case, we have centralized database, wherein the data is located at a single site, distributed database where the data is distributed across different sites, 
and a cloud database wherein the data is created and maintained using cloud data services that provide defined performance measures for the database. Another one is by classifying by data type stored in our database. In this case, we have general purpose database, which is a database containing a wide variety of data used in multiple disciplines. We may also have a discipline specific database wherein the database contains data focused only on sub specific subject areas. And lastly, we may also have an operational database, which is a database that is designed to support a company's day-to-day -day operations. We also have analytical databases. First, the data warehouse, wherein the data is stored in a format optimized for supporting decisions of the management. We also have online analytical processing, or OLAP, uh, which is an umbrella term specifying the tools for retrieving, processing, and modeling data from the data warehouse. And lastly, business intelligence, which captures and processes business data to generate information to support decision making. We may also classify databases based on the degree to which the data is structured. In this case, we may have unstructured data, wherein the data exists in its original or raw state. Um, structured data, which is resulting from some formatting or processing that we have done to the data. And same with structured data wherein we are processing the data only to some extent. And lastly, we have extens extensible markup language or XML, which is not officially a database per se, but a way for us to be able to transport data from one system to another that is in text file format. An example of XML can be seen on the next slide. Here we can see an example of an XML file that contains some data. As you can see, the data is stored using tags in the XML file. For most of the term, our goal is to identify business user requirements, transform them into data models, and implement them as a database. Now, it is important for us to have a well-designed database because having a well-designed database facilitates data management and generates accurate and valuable information. If you have a poorly designed one, it can cause difficulty in tracing errors if um, some errors are coming up and it may lead to some poor decision making in the process. Now let's talk about the evolution of file system data processing. It all started with the manual file systems wherein everything is accomplished through a system of file folders and filing cabinets. Then we got introduced to computerized file systems wherein we are hiring data processing specialists to create computer-based systems for us to be able to track our data and produce required reports. Now the difference between the specialists that we know now to the data processing specialists before is that those specialists are hired particularly for that purpose. They're creating everything from scratch and as the need for those reports, for example, arises. And lastly, we now have file system Redux, which are modern end user productivity tools. Um, some of these we are still using as a database. Um, these include spreadsheet programs such as Microsoft Excel. Now let us get acquainted with some basic file terminologies. First, we have the data, which are raw facts such as telephone number, birth date, customer name, uh, year to date sales value. They have little meaning unless they have been organized in some logical manner. Next is a field. A field is a character or group of characters, either alphabetic or numeric, that has a specific meaning. A field is used to define and store our data. Next is record. Record is a logically connected set of one or more fields that describes a person, place, or thing. For example, the field that constitute a record for a customer might consist of the customer's name, address, phone number, date of birth, credit limit, and unpaid balance. And then lastly, when you get a collection of records, so what you get is a file. So for example, a file might contain data about the students currently enrolled at Gigantic University. As an example, we can see here um, each of this is data. So 215Z Holly B. Parker, 904338, 3416. These are all data. Each of them represents the data. 
a field represents um, each of the columns. So in this case, um, project code, project manager, monitor phone, monitor address, and project bid price. A record naman, a record is, well, a combination of all of those fields. Like for example, this one, 317P, William K. Moore, 904-445-2719, 216 Morton Road, Statson, Florida, and some amount of money or bidding price. The combination of all of these is what constitutes a record. And when you get multiple records, like for example in this case, then we get a file. Here we can see a simple file system. We have an example of the sales department and personal department. The sales department has customer files and sales files, whereas the personal department has the agent files. And as you can see, for different departments, we have different files and they have created different file management programs and file report programs that are only applicable to their specific departments. Now, what are the problems with file system data processing? First, extensive programming. We have seen in the previous slide that for each of the department, they have their own file management programs and file report programs. And if they are going to have a new report, for example, they need to create that report from scratch. So it's going to, it's going to entail extensive programming. Next, lack of security and limited data sharing. We have seen that in the example earlier, each of the department handles their own data and so it's going to be hard to share data with the other departments. And in addition to that, we also have difficulty of getting quick answers. Since the data are being handled by different departments, if you need to find a specific data or a specific information, you need to go to the department first and ask for their sign off or approval. Lengthy development times, this is, the, uh, this is related to the extensive programming. And lastly, complex system administration, among many others.